you are a Bears guy. Anybody who watches this show knows that. You actually yeah. uh, were part of their preseason broadcast team. Would you would you turn the page on Mitchell Trubisky right now, Kyle Brandt? Yeah, I just there's the the problem is there's, there's not a next page. It's the last page in the book. It, it's I gotta say, Rich, as a guy who grew up in Chicago, this has been the, one of the most bitterly disappointing seasons of my life. I think the last time I was this disappointed as a Chicago sports enthusiast, you'd have to look at the NLCS 2003 uh, off the bat of Luis Castillo. The ball goes to left field. Moises Alou reaches for it, and a young gentleman from the north suburbs with headphones on and a turtleneck uh, interferes with the ball. And Steve Bartman happened, and then the Cubs collapse and lose it. That, that was the last time I was as disappointed as I am in this season. An NFC North battle. The Detroit Lions visiting the Chicago Bears. The same Bears are off to a rough start this season. They've already lost more games than they did all last year. And Mitch Trubisky has a plan to help get the team back on track. Yesterday, the QB said he is trying to get TVs turned off inside the Bears practice facility because of outside criticism. Trubisky said there are too many people talking about the team and they need to have earmuffs on when coming into work. So, Shannon, <laughs> is this a good idea or a bad idea? Yeah, it's a terrible idea. They ain't talking about the team. They talk about you. Yeah. And guess what, Skip? It's not coming from the TV. It comes from your teammates. It got you been terrible. Skip, the dude is on place to throw for less than 2,500 yards. Their quarterbacks right now, they got almost 2,500 yards with eight games to play. That's how bad Mitchell Trubisky is. I wish they might turn him. Woo, Skip. Can you imagine? Now, I'm a healthy, conscious eater. So I don't want them to bring chicken. I don't want them to bring pizza. Mm -hmm. I don't want them to bring bacon or sausage in there because I eat healthy. Sure. Mitchell Trubisky, play better. So guess what? Because the people that's criticizing, they're not criticizing the team. Mm. They're criticizing you. It is not the TV that's doing it. It's your teammate because you play it awful. Hmm. Uh, I'm not sure where you're going with this because, to me, I'm not a Trubisky fan. I told you before the draft no. this was a bad I idea. That. Yes. But I like this approach because last year they called it Zero Dark Ten. That's what his teammate Kyle Long Huh. talked about his social media uh, sort of blackout yeah. where he just didn't read anything on social media okay. and it's That's 10 you. it's 10 because he wears yeah, yeah. 10 so he's asked are you still in zero dark 10 he said yep i'm in that mode in fact he volunteered i even told him to turn down the sound on the tvs or turn it off so i can't hear them and i don't blame him a bit because that would just be more distraction it's it's why why would you subject yourself to that why would you walk down the hall of the place you're preparing to win a football game in and have to look up to somebody saying, he's garbage. He is. Yeah. Right? And they, 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 they lie. Yeah. You, you get upset when you they lie on you. Okay. They're telling the truth. Okay, but why do you need to let that seep into your psyche? Well, it, why would you? I, I'm with him. It's That's the truth smart. that hurts. It's yeah, the truth that hurts. Okay, well, it's, if it's the truth, you don't need to hear it while yeah, you you're do. trying to salvage a season at <laughs> three and five. How about play, how, let me tell you a, a solution mm -hmm. for all this. Yeah. Play better. Hopefully okay. he missed this discussion. Play better. win, though, the Bears would climb out of last place in the NFC North. And the problem with Trubisky is th there's no recourse. Like, the Bears do not have this young, late-round draft pick. They don't have a, a Devlin Hodges or a Gardner Minshew or any of these guys to say, screw it, let's give it a shot. They got Mitch. They got Chase Daniel, who's not happening. They've already tried it. And that's it. And the worst part of that is, okay, so you're, maybe you think you're screwed this season. There's no draft picks. Like, they, they spent them. Their draft picks were number 52. He's a pass rusher for the Bears. His name's Khalil. They're not going in this first round and getting a pick. So it's like, not only does Mitch not working, they bet it all. They said, Matt Nagy, we're going to give you this young athletic quarterback from the ACC, and we think you can win with them. And they can't. It's just busted. So it's not just that it's not working. I don't see a fix. They're in a bad marriage with no prenup, and they just got to ride it out and pay the piper. But that said, there is uh, potentially maybe somebody older uh, for this relationship, Kyle, um, to continue this analogy. And yeah. uh, his name is Cameron. Um, mm -hmm. And we all know uh, Cameron has been in a parade in, in Chicago uh, in pop culture fame. Uh, this one, however, will not be wearing a Red Wings jersey. He's currently wearing a Panthers jersey, and it looks like he might be available at age 31, nice and healthy with a chip on his shoulder. Would you be all for that if you can obviously work out the cap ramifications? What do you think? Well, I mean, it would be worth it, Rich, just if you showed up in that Gordy House sweater. I mean, that would be an unbelievable homage to Cameron's. Um, 
It's interesting keeping up that analogy. You, you would then be getting out of this crazy marriage and turning to a a, a more mature woman, yes. an older woman. Correct. But man, that woman has been through a lot, and she's got scars, and she's eccentric, and uh, she dresses strange, and it changes the whole face of your family. And in this case, that family would be the Bears franchise. I don't see um, the McCaskies. I don't see Ryan Pace, the GM, or Matt Nagy saying. We're going to go with Cam Newton because, of course, you get seduced by Cam. But, like, has there ever been a bigger buyer beware than Cam Newton? It's just, it's like, I, of course, I'm intoxicated by good Cam. But, frankly, I, I've been waiting for good Cam for about four years. And it's the shoulder and it's the foot. And it's, it's, it, it sort of feels like one of these, if you can haul it, you can have it, items on Craigslist. And I, I, I love it. But I'm very, very scared that if we pay Cam, we bring him in, and it just doesn't have it anymore. So I don't think that's the answer for the Bears. And as a Bears fan, like I would rather have a completely fresh start than a, a hand-me-down Cam Newton. Well, then, at the risk of sounding even creepier yeah. with this analogy, what about Go on, some, I love what, this. what about somebody a little bit more steady, uh, a little bit older, but a little bit more steady, uh, out, of, out of a very long-term relationship that just uh, didn't work out? <laughs> uh, this person was told, it's not, it's not, it's not me, it's you. Um, it's a redhead in, in Andy Dalton. Um, would, would that be something that could be a marriage for Chicago, Kyle? You know, it, it's, it's one of these things where it, it doesn't blow you away, okay? But it's like, um, you know, the Bears have been such a crazy ride in their relationship. And it's in one minute, it's we're, we're going to Coachella, and then we're going to Burning Man, and up and down, and we're going to swingers parties. It's been nuts. I, I can't go through this. Right. And then you have Andy Dalton who says, you know what? I just like to hang out and paint tiny soldiers and watch Madam Secretary. That's what I like to do. And I think we can do that together. So the fact that they have these type of players and the so-called genius and Nagy, this is where I'm at, Rich. This is how disappointing this season has yes, been. Yes. You were suggesting to me, would you like the Bears to have Andy Dalton coming off a winless team and a guy who's never won a playoff game? And I'm thinking, I think I would like to date Andy Dalton. Let's do it. Bring him in. I actually would. This pounds or something. All right, Bears and Eagles. Mitchell Trubisky, at least he dressed the part. That was yeah, good. That's half the battle. Let's see here. What, what play can I call that will make our quarterback not look great? Uh, uh, this one, because our receiver didn't help. Three cone, actually running back. Ends up dropping that. And then, let's see, your next play, uh, Trey Burton. Can't do much with that. So something that he could handle. Scratch that one. Let's make it simple. Uh, and then this is just, <laughs> that's a bum rush. Yep. Jannard Avery just picked up in a trade from Cleveland. Malcolm Jenkins combined. They had nine total yards in the first half. Fewest in four decades. Nine total Both. yards in the half. Remember and, Jordan and you, Howard? And you in the pro. Remember Jordan Howard? I he do. used to play for the Bears? I do. Uh-huh. Three seasons, 24 touchdowns with them. You think he wanted that? Oh, oh, oh. I guess we call that they aired on Jordan. I like that. Do you? Mm-hmm. It's Not average. Really okay. It's going to be a nice... David Montgomery, kind of one of his replacements. The rookie leaping in, one of his two touchdowns on the day. And the Bears, who were down 19 zip, have cut it to 19-14. Still in the fourth, a little bit over a buck to go. Miles Sanders, another rookie running back, stopped shy of the first down. So the Bears hold the Eagles to three. Phillies up eight. Ensuing kickoff. One more chance for Chicago, but you got... I mean, come on. Adam Shaheen, just fall on it, bro. You don't have to run with it. get on the ball, man. We don't pay you for that. Look how big your number is. Woo! Do you you think we want you to have the ball you had an 80 number on? Oh, boy. All right, so the weather wasn't even that terrible, right? I love when they do that, brother. Yeah, it's fun. It's fun. Can we talk Mitchell Trubisky? Yeah. 10 for 21. Mm Mm-hmm. At what point did the Bears just say, Listen, I get it. We traded up. I get it. The who, guy who, that, whose fault is it? Well, it's the, the GM. So Ryan who, Pace. Who drafted it? Ryan Pace. He's still there. Okay. He's still there. The head coach had nothing to do with this transaction, right? Right. But he's going to suffer because of it. So sooner or later, somebody got to step up and say, I made a mistake. Either the GM or the head coach goes, hey, man, I can't keep doing this. Because what is going on right now is bad. They're almost the worst team in the NFL in throwing the football. You got to throw the football in the NFL to be able to win games. You cannot, you're not Lamar Jackson. You cannot run, run, run. Trubisky is not that kind of guy. They got to figure out who this guy is in a hurry to save jobs. Families lose jobs because of mess like this at the quarterback position. Okay, but let's remember, he had like 13 or 14 starts at North Carolina before they traded up to draft him. So what you're trying to say? Is that he wasn't who, experienced who coming else into this was in thing? that draft? Name it. Patrick Mahomes. And who else? Deshaun, Deshaun Watson. Watson. And you take this guy, 
And what he's showing you right now, you could have had those two. And but we this need is to get what eight more games this year. See if if he can salvage something. Yeah, but would the coaches be retained if you drop these yeah. five Wasn't out of eight games? Of last year, he got them to the playoffs. Double doink, girls else they're moving. Man, on. they don't care nothing about that. They care about what you did yesterday. All right, can we move on to? Yeah, a, we can. A, a, Never too early to check out your NFC playoff picture. Seahawks, they're in the wild card as of right now. Vikings are there, but you got the Rams, Panthers, Eagles sniffing it as well. All right, give me two right now as your wild cards. They might even be division leaders as of right now. Who are they? I like the way the board sits right now, but I like the Rams, man. You like the Rams? Yeah, I, I like the Rams because mm. it seems as though Jalen Ramsey has come and energized these guys. Okay. He's 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 just gave that defense a burst of energy, and now it seems like the offense is catapulting off that. And these guys, they know how to win down the stretch. All right, so you got Rams, and give me one other. Do you like Seahawks, Vikings, See, Panthers? I love the Seahawks. I love the Seahawks. So they, I, yes. I love the Seahawks. How about yeah. good enough to contend for the West? Yeah, Seahawks should Seahawks should win. Not the West. They're, the what? Niners are unbeaten. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You're exactly right. The Seahawks should be. Seahawks are the other I'm happy wild card. Happy we can talk this stuff out. They, they're the other wild card. The, the Niners so darn good. I darn near forgot about them. So you're good with these. Yep. Right here. Yep. I'm gonna hold these up. I'm not know. gonna hold you to them. You're good. Huh? Do you mind signing these for me? Uh. Uh-uh. What? I'm just gonna put them in the clubhouse. I didn't play on those teams. I didn't play. You think I'm gonna sell them? I didn't play on those teams. <laughs> Stop. I'm sign no card these for you. That's enough. <laughs> That's enough. All right. So through week nine. That's his NFC. But let's start back where it all began. Ryan Pace. Look at his first two drafts. Um, his inability to draft impact players in the in the first round has hurt this team. Remember, Hamp, you and I and Ed. I think it was year two. We were talking about uh, uh, the the Bears and how they had these great options for quarterbacks. And of course, this rookie, not so very smart GM that was a former defensive player. And those guys aren't very smart. I mean, just trust me, everybody knows that. Guy named John Lynch comes in and he basically fleeces Ryan Pace. Where are they at now, the 49ers today? Where are they at? They're right. Oh, they're seven and zero, and they're undefeated. And where are the Bears right now? Oh, we gave up a bunch, a bunch of draft choices to get a kid that had played 12 games in his entire college career. So. It starts with Ryan Pace. It ends with Ryan Pace. You know, Nagy, he, he's a byproduct of Ryan Pace. This is who he brought in. So let's focus there because, quite frankly, the only thing he got lucky on was uh, the Raiders, basically. Uh, John Gruden had, had been out of the game for so long that he didn't recognize what Khalil Mack had to bring to the table, and that's the one thing probably that he's done exceptionally well. well so it, let, let's start there, and it, it, it starts and ends there, actually. You know, the game itself, look, you got one first down in the first half because of a penalty. Um, you're going to lose the game. I, I don't care who you are. You're going to lose the game, and the defense couldn't get off the field when it mattered most. But they, they played their guts out that first half and kept it, in a game, and then, of course, you know, there were no adjustments on the defensive side to start the third quarter, and they looked like a team that, uh, or a defense that had given up, and they had an easy score on them. Hey, Glenn. So it starts you know, there. Ed. It's pretty simple. Yeah. The, it, what you saw that first half, we've seen this, we've seen this film before. We've seen how many times does, does it go to every game? We had the ball last week for 38 minutes. 38 minutes in a 60-minute game, and we only put up 16 points. Every game, if we do win it, it comes down to the last play of the game or the last drive of a game. That's if we can win the game. This guy, this has been going on last year. It's going on this year, and there's there's no improvement. You got a defense that I'll tell you what, and, and, and let me say this about, about our defense. I know they're all going to say, yeah, we're sticking together. We love each other. We hug. We're all brothers. We're we got each that. other's back. I, yeah, we got, yeah, I got your back. You got my back. Everybody's got everybody's back, liars. Well, they don't because they're looking at a quarterback that shouldn't be out on the field. Now, the tough part is. That's sure. Guys, That's for sure. Let's, let's just call it what it is. Um, who is their quarterback? So. Here's the defense. Here's the team. You saw uh, Anthony Miller throw his helmet down in the third quarter, and it you know it shatters all over the sideline. And they, you know, Tony Medlin, bless his heart, is working his his tail off to fix the helmet. But that tells you 
that you've lost a lot of your players because you continue to run out a guy that has no business being a starter in the National Football League. And you could see it, and you see it every week. And unfortunately, you know, uh, but look, or actually fortunately, he played a really good second half because he threw a couple of passes. But at crunch time again, when they had the momentum, you know, they had a three and out, and he overthrew a guy. And, and uh, you know, the, he, why are you throwing it to Adam Shaheen? Uh, again, I don't get it. I don't get the matchups. Uh, you can say what you want about the Eagles in that last drive. What they did do is they put their best players by movements against the weakest players on our defense, and that's how they were able to keep to stay on the field. Well, the play- guy making the calls, Glenn, is Nagy. Yeah, the tight, ends, the tight ends were able to get open with mismatches, and that's why they were able to continue to move down the field. Well, the, the play to Shaheen, too, should have been picked off, and that was just a t- terribly designed play. Uh, but to what you're saying, Kaz, I'm curious your guys' thoughts on this. Look, they they jumped offsides four times today. Which, in the first half in the, by the defensive line. Right. Yeah. And, they, and they picked up personal fouls on plays where guys were two, three yards out of bounds. There's the discipline, horrendous. I, 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 but that, that happens because as you get frustrated as a player because you don't feel like there's any hope. You're thinking, hey, unless we turn the ball over or get a pick and score a touchdown, and, and you know, the defense, that's hard to do. Anybody will tell you that. That's not how you score points in the NFL. It's great when you can on defense, but it's hard to do. So you, this is, you call it lack of discipline. I call it frustration and guys that are starting to say, what are we doing? And why are we doing it, right? I mean, that's human nature. We we all want to win. Everybody wants to be the best. Everybody wants to do that. But frustration at some point sets in, and you act like a fool. It and happens. The bottom line is this. Four quarters of football, okay? And th- there's all kinds of different offensive sets and, and schemes that are out there that if you're behind by 10 points and so much time is left, this is the kind of offense we're going to run against our opponent. We're going to do all this, Okay. But my, for heaven's sakes, in four quarters, I, I, I can't get over it. 164 yeah, yards at this state, <laughs> at this time, at this level of football, that, that that's not even, the word acceptable, it doesn't even come into play. Now yeah. you're looking at that, how dumb is dumb? And I mean I that from totally I, the way I know about this I mean, game. You don't have to say any more. I mean, nine yards at halftime. It, it, okay, okay, but but again, we're talking about the team. How can it not lose heart? How can it not lose its composure and conviction? It's going to get worse. Big but wait a minute. Hey, we're on the goal line. What is it? First and goal, and we put in our five foot five uh, inch running back to run a dive play, and he gets you know bit slapped off, off the line of scrimmage. Number two, yeah. the coach not going for two when he needed to. When the point was 19, you need to get the eight and eight. Stupidity. It's stupid. Now, what about this? Your safety, your all-pro safety gets run over in the hole on third down and, and, and gives up a first down. What about this? You're, as, as you just said, your defensive line's jumping off sides, giving them second and five or first and five four different times in the first half. So now what we're talking about and – we don't take any joy in this, folks, but we're starting to see the foundation crumble, the things that you count on players to do correctly time and time and time again. Now you're seeing these parts of the game pop up and, the, the, and, and crumble right in front of our eyes. The thing is, this is the eighth game. Okay, we're going backwards, guys. We, we're not advancing from quarter to quarter, half to half, game to game. We're not going forward in the passing game. We're not going backwards in the running game. Why? Take a look at the, the excuse me the statistics. There, I mean, my God, I, where, where do you go from here? What do you do if this keeps going on and he keeps playing Trubisky and we keep putting up these kinds of numbers? When we got a lot, we got eight more games to go, and we keep doing this. Well, are we going to lose the Bear fans? Is George McCaskey going to let that happen? Because if it is, it's going to go from week to week to week. Us losing, but losing terribly. You think George McCaskey will let this go on? I have, that's a question I got asked. I, I, how about this? I, I, Cos, I, Cos. I, I think if, if this team collapses this year and it falls apart, like 
It looks like, because, uh, you know, look, they have injuries. They, they don't, who do you bring in to play quarterback? Who, what are you going to do? Who's your playmakers? Actually, you probably do have some playmakers, but you don't have a guy that can pull the trigger and yeah, throw it to the open receivers. I mean, a lot of, you know, a, a blitz is coming. Dan, an NFL quarterback reads the blitz and he gets rid of the ball quickly. Our guy catches the ball and has no clue that the blitz is coming and, and, he, and he gives up a sack. It's embarrassing. And then panics. Okay, but think about this. Just think about this. Talking about losing the team. Think how fortunate they were. They weren't at home today. Could you imagine the boo birds at Soldier Field? There's not an earplug that you could find that could, you know, stop the boos after your, that offense would have played like that at home. Could you imagine? I mean, it would have been, it would, uh, that somebody would have set fire to the stadium. Mean, I mean, it would have been that bad. You mean the 200 fans left in the stadium? You know, by whoever's then? left. You know, I, you know what I just, I just said, I'll tell you what, you listen, it, I don't see anything of these guys after this game today of, of, of reversing this downfall we're in. And especially the teams are going to play. And what I just mentioned, ownership's going to step in here sooner or later. You, they can't let this go on from week to week to week. And by the way, by the way, paying guys $23.5 million, $12 million, $10 million, $8 million, $7 million to play 16 games. And we run for 64 yards and pass for 102 yards and... They're not open for criticism. The coaching, uh, they're not open for criticism. Give me a break. Well, they, yeah, they, they, it's, it's embarrassing. And, but I, I'm telling you guys, it starts with the general manager, and he's made these decisions, and he has put the Bears in this position. And, you know, he's got he's to gotta take responsibility for There's it. There's no question where it all goes. Right. But I, I, just, I just don't see... Unless somebody has a, a magic wand that you wave over everything, it, part of this is just lack of talent on offense. It just is. But more, no, but see, it's, it's not lack of talent. It's a lack of preparation and game plan. And it reminds me, an old wise man once told me, the, Nagy's the type of guy that studies everything and learns nothing. But I... You know the whole concept that the the, the, the fan base is always going to be there. Obi, don't these, your bear fan is a bear fan is a bear fan. Don't bet on it. You don't. I wouldn't stake your life on it, my friend. I mean, There's, sure, things are changing in this country. People are finding other things to do. Uh, believe me, and and the love of the bears, yeah, has it been there? But I tell you what, if you're going to continue to shove this kid Trubisky down everybody's throat. When everybody knows a kid cannot play at this level and a coach that is, I mean, my God, what kind of a game plan does this guy have from week to week to week? He can't make the quarterback better. He can't make the receivers better. He can't make our offense better. We struggle to score a touchdown a game. That's a fact. We do. We absolutely do. All right, we'll take calls. After mm, perhaps you all know. Why won't Matt Nagy bench Mitchell Trubisky? Oh, man, two things. One is the ROI. They got to get a return on that investment. That is a number two overall yeah. pick. And they moved up from three to two to get him. Gave up two-thirds and a fourth rounder for that. So there's an investment there. You got to get it. You got to extract as much as you can out of it. And two, it's like the politics at play in sports. When you drafted high, I was a second rounder. I'm not like these guys right here, number one overall, number two overall. But even as a second rounder, my roommate was undrafted, Pat Williams. And we, we sitting there every night, and I'm getting destroyed. I'm coming from Columbia. I'm learning the game on the fly. He went to A&M. He knew the game. And every day they were glowing about me. Oh, Marcellus, I can see it. Oh, it's coming right around the corner. Meanwhile, Pat doing better than me, and they would sit there, uh, get to the back of the line, move on. No investment in him. He's undrafted. You're seeing that right now. They're going to try everything, even using some magic and sorcery to try and make sure that people see Matt Nagy and everyone who's invested in Mitchell Trubisky succeed. And that's all we're seeing at play. I, I agree with you. And I think the worst thing for Mitch right now is to be benched. You know, he, he's in his third year. You know, like you say, he, he's an investment. And... For some quarterbacks, it take time. But I'll say this. It's Matt Nagy's decision, and Matt Nagy is responsible for Mitch Trubisky. He's responsible for making sure that this guy can go out and play better than what he played yesterday. So what, what does that take? I mean, dumb down the offense? Maybe that's what it is. You got too much into the offense, 
take something out, but do the things that Mitch is comfortable with so he don't go out and have just a disappointing showing like he did yesterday. Mm. I don't want to see him bench because I think that's the worst thing that you can do for a guy that's in a funk. He's playing with no confidence. How do you get him confidence? You give him things that he like. Make him feel good about the game plan and what he's doing. I've seen that happen too many times before. Nagy comes from under that tree. Make Trubisky at least a above average player within his next eight, eight game stretch. That's the best thing they could do. Then give it a full season, and then you can look back and evaluate and say, we can't move forward with this guy. But I don't think you, you get anything about, in putting Chase Daniels in there. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's the same type of uh, mm-hmm. and That's what I was about same to look. touch on. I was about to touch on that. So mm-hmm. my, my first point is a piggyback off of what you guys are saying. Uh, GM Ryan Pace and head coach, former head coach John Fox, bring in Trubisky. Probably looked at him as the savior of John Fox's job, probably the reemergence and resurgence of the Chicago Bears. Now, in comes Nagy. It's promises, Wit. They made promises. It's not just an ROI. Nagy mm. can't take him out because he made promises. And I'm going to yeah. tell you how you know it's promises. Because just like you said, to the second point, Chase Daniels, 11-year journeyman, Ooh. never really transitioned into being a starter or a real franchise type of guy, a guy that could take your team to the next level. That's your backup. So if Mitch Trubisky goes down with an injury, if Mitch Trubisky goes down and, or gets benched or whatever it may be, you're not you're you basically are cash uh, you're you're cashing the check for this season and it's done whatever you got right now you're taking that away because you're showing right now Chase Daniels as your backup that's a high draft pick you had to bring in you had you you got to try to see what's going to happen with I, I'm gonna disagree with you a little bit about Chase Daniel he is considered one of the upper tier backup quarterbacks in the NFL yep. he's supposed to be a cut below Teddy Bridgewater in terms of backup quarterbacks. Mm. The reason to bench Trubisky, I think eventually is going to be, you're going to lose your locker room, man. The the guys in that locker room, Khalil Mack and everybody else, they're not worried about the promises you made. And and trust me, I'm sure Matt Nagy uh, told, in order to get the head coaching job, went in there and told, what I'm going to do with Mitch Trubisky, that's (laughs) going to be unbelievable. It's on. And he can't walk those promises back. Because, and that's how they hook you in. So Ryan Pace has Matt Nagy riding in the same boat as him. Yeah. It's as if Matt Nagy drafted him. Yeah. Well, you told me you believed in it. You told me this and that was going to happen, and the, and the offense you were going to run was going to be Mitch-friendly. And so he can't walk out of that. But more than anything, I think it's Ryan Pace, and it's a decision upstairs. They won't allow hmm. Matt Nagy to bench him. But eventually it's going to cost everybody credibility Within that locker room, it's going to be hard to coach those guys. This guy is stopping them from winning games. That offense is letting a a very talented defense down. Yeah, uh, it comes at you fast. Life happens fast. Let's just be real about Mitch Trubisky. Also, last year he won 11 games. Yeah, there you go. Last year he had a top 10 offense, ninth in points. Last year he had a number one defense. They were like, we were close. Remember the the kick, the field goal, boom, boom. The double boink, without that, they advance in the playoffs. So he has equity to some degree. He has runway to let's see which one is real. Mm -hmm. Last year's Mitch or this year's Mitch? Or this year's. Uh, Yeah. So and then Chase Daniels, to your point, he's two and three as a starter. I was about to say. I mean, let's not act like we got evidence. Top tier backup. Backup. When we've seen him out there. You're the backup quarterback. Yeah. But but he was a starter. Teddy Bridgewater was a starter. And and, and a winning starter. So. John Gruden, what we say a month ago, laughing at him. Now, all of a sudden, hey, John Gruden. Same thing with Mr. Trubisky. Just a year ago, <laughs> a few games ago, Mr. Trubisky was a toast of the town. How, how that things change so fast. Yeah, I feel bad for Matt Nagy because I, I hate that he's in this position where he got to make a decision on the guy that he just inherited you know, mm. as, as a coach. And look, when you're a talented, you know, offensive mind, you feel like you can take any guy and make him better. That just might not be the case. Let's keep in mind that Mitch Trubisky only had one year of college experience, so he's still growing. But in the NFL, you ain't got that type of time. time. 